Hello there. Welcome to another Mixed Martial Arts Conversation for Sky Sports. Looking forward to Israel Adesanya rising in the weight division up to light heavy to take on the champion Jan Blachowicz in the UFC. Please say former UFC fighter Mark Weir joins us once again to set the scene ahead of this one. With that step up in weight, how intriguing is this contest, Mark? Yeah, it's got a kind of a lot of hype, a lot of weight behind this. Uh, what you got to remember, he's going for, he's a fifth person, I, I think they said, going for a double title. And uh, what's good about this, um, Blokovic has got uh, knockout power, but obviously uh, Anna Sanders come, has done heavyweight in kickboxing. So it looks interesting. No one's really got the edge on in any way, so Anna Sander is an undefeated title holder. The idea of facing Blahovic, are you surprised the UFC has gone for this one? Is there jeopardy in there because of the weight gap and the, and the size jump? I think um, he's watched him, and because he's fought heavyweight as well in kickboxing, and uh, he's mainly known for his what? Well, he's excelled now in his punching power. Uh, he's an all-round fighter. He can grapple and everything else, but the thing what stood out, the thing what's making him the champion now, is that he can knock people out. And uh, I think Anna Sanders can see that maybe there's something in there where he can hit without being hit. Uh, maybe what's encouraged him to go to you know light heavyweight. Yes, and we were talking about before we started recording that he has the experience of fighting north of the 185 middleweight limit yes. in MMA. We, we mentioned also he's fought at cruiserweight in boxing and, and done pretty well, 200 pound mark for, for boxing. That's where that lies. So he's been up around this area before. But how surprised, concerned, intrigued were you by the fact that he's talked about coming in at maybe 193, 195 pounds fight night when we're expecting Blahovich will just swell and inflate from the 205 mark? So possibly there'll be a the 20, 25 pound mark difference, even more so between the weights of the, the two competitors. Yeah, and I, I've heard that he's, he's saying that he's training the same. He's still going to jump in a sauna. Uh, don't be surprised if we come in about the top end of 190, uh, not the 200 mark. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if it's a game he's playing, but uh, he says that he's, like I said, he, the only thing difference is he's going to sauna, but I can drink. That's what he says the difference is. <laughs> but he said he's not training anything. He says he's training exactly the same. Yeah, what what do you th how do you think about that approach as well? Do you think that's a wise approach to just do your own thing rather than be concerned about inflating over a short period of time to try and compete physically with with the big pole Blahovic? Right, a couple a couple of reasons I, I don't think it's uh, the truth because when you punch and you got weight behind you, you got more punching power, uh, and again to knock not heavier guys out. Uh, the other thing as well, when pinned against the cage or escaping from the cage. Uh, he won't be able to do any pinning because he's not the right weight behind it. And also when you're escaping on the ground, you think about it. When you're lifting a, uh, say, 200 pound, uh, 200 kilogram weight, you're going to lift it slower if it's uh, than uh, something which is uh, only 100 kilograms. So when he's escaping, throwing Anderson off is be no problem. So if it goes to the ground again, uh, it's not going to be in his favor. So I can't see that he's giving him too many advantages. It means that the simple thing he's going to do, close him down, pin him against cage, take him down, and then he's going to be stuck because of the weight difference. So I can't see him doing that. I think it's just more like a ploy. Yeah, you think it's a ploy. Is it, is it to lure Blahovic into maybe changing his approach? We, we know him recently for spectacular knockouts, particularly against the last fight against Dominic Reyes, but he's got a number of submissions, I believe nine of them on his, on his career CV in MMA. Do you think he's trying to tempt Blahovic to, to try and take him down? Is that possibly what it's about? I, I think he's going to do that anyway. Uh, I think, but like... You know, Anderson Silva is his role model. He just plays mind games. Um, if you look at all the great fighters, they, they, they get inside your head. And they, they throw things out there, but it's more or less to just throw your concentration, uh, change your game. And I think uh, I think his goal is, the same way he did with Costa, he's going to hit without being hit. He's going to keep everything long range. I think he'll tap the leg again. Um, you know, a lot of the leg kicks. A lot of them doing calf kicks now. And, uh, like, you know, that's one of his strengths. And I think getting involved with reflexes, Will you know be moving? You know, I think it'll be lateral moving a lot. He won't be walking in a straight line, and I it will be hitting without being hit. Yeah, hit and move. He's twenty and zero, of course, in the in the sport. He's yeah. got fifteen stoppages. How significant are the early exchanges? Does he need to let Blahovic know that he carries power at light heavyweight just as a deterrent? Could that be a, a concern? Because what will Blahovic think if he's not intimidated by the power? Will he think I can walk through this guy? Well, I think he's going to throw a few things, not not overcommit. But I think he wants to get his timing right. So he's going to make him um, come towards him, you know, and um, miss a few. You know, get the, he's, uh, Anderson will adjust to his um, speed of attack. 
And I think once he's done that, then he'll start committing a bit more to his punches. But I don't think he'll commit with any punches or kicks too early because he doesn't know how quick he's going to be to react to the, the to what he's throwing. So first of all, he's got to get his bearings right because when someone moves forward and you know comes at you with a punch and tries to shoot, uh, each person's got their own unique way of coming in, their own strength. So he's got to get the timing to defend it first. If he's concentrating on hitting him, it's harder to defend it. What do you think will be Blahovic's plan in this then? Do you, do you think he's going to try and trade or do you feel like he is going to take this down as a Brazilian black belt jiu-jitsu, isn't he? So he's got, he's got that experience in that kind well, of warfare as well. The one thing in his favour, he knows and uh, everybody knows that if he lands, he's got a chance of knocking him out. So his idea is he's going to stand up, he's going to come forward and he knows that a lot of times when he tries to grab him, uh, even when he, it breaks, I've seen him do it before, he'll break from attacking the leg, he'll rise up. As he rises up, they'll throw. So try and hit him before the takedown and hit him after the takedown has been stopped or uh, as they break up. And I think that'll be his main plan to close him down. If he gets him to the ground, he has got an advantage again. But I know Anderson has just been rewarded his purple belt and he's smirking. because, uh, In other words, he must believe he's better than, because no one's really seen his ground game, but he's laughing. He might say he's better than what everybody's uh, predicting. Um, look at his idol, Hands and Silver. He was better on the ground than people predicted. He submitted some unexpected ground game fighters, so he was well rounded. But no one, no one has, has really seen Anna Sanders' ground game yet. You, you pointed out that it was Jan Blahovic's birthday recently. He turns thirty eight, and, and you've been yes. there in that, that stage of your career in mixed martial arts. Do you think Adesanya needs to set a heavy tempo? Just question whether his father time has started to maybe edge away at his cardiovascular health and fitness. I think Jan's got two things. He's just had a belt. He's just got a title. He's enjoying it. He's like a superstar walking uh, walking around in his home home country. And uh, the main thing, he's going to get motivated because he's newborn or he's going to feel the pressure to perform. And especially added pressure because he's got this guy who looks like uh, he's going to be the next mega star coming up from middleweight to make a statement at his own weight division, which is light heavy. So he's either going to feel the pressure or he knows beating this guy is going to make him an absolute superstar as well. And where does the ego play, ego play in from Jan's perspective? And you've got someone coming up who's got a big name. Is there a temptation to try and be spectacular and put them in their place? Does he have to maybe remain composed and not let that ego flare up too much with the, the challenger from a, a lower division? Yeah, I, I think in his favour, everybody's marking him off. And uh, look what he's done. You know, every time he steps up for the last few fights, he's been taking people out like a deserved champion he is. And so I think, uh, you know, you can't oversee it. You're, you're just going to see the same thing. Otherwise, you'll he'll, he'll catch Israel, Alessander, and he'll go out if he's, if he's not careful. Uh, uh, like I said, Alessander knows that he's dangerous. And he says that everybody's overlooking him. And you can't. Because remember, it just takes a one or a two, and he'll take you out with one punch if it comes down to it. So, I, you know, when you, when you look at it, I think on the cards, uh, like I said earlier, he's got the pressure to win knowing that when he wins this fight, he's absolutely right at the top rate, uh, ratings of becoming the next star of the light heavyweight division. Yeah, where do you think Israel Adesanya would stand then in these conversations that we love having about, not only, maybe not the greatest of all time, that's, that's a premature perhaps, but certainly the greatest active fighter. Where would you see him in, in those conversations if he beats okay. Jan Blachowicz? Okay, I've seen this, okay. Someone said, uh, potentially they reckon he's going to go up to light heavyweight. If he wins that, he'll go back down to middleweight win again, probably fluctuate up to light heavy. And I reckon his goal is, which would be the craziest one, is to go up to heavyweight because he's fought there as well. And uh, even if he's not a champion, but he beats someone at heavyweight, all three weights, that will be setting a, a, a pedestal or a standard no one's ever met. And he'll be the great one of the greatest ever. It, but I think he's got a chance, but he's got to, it all starts this weekend. If he wins this one, that opens up the doors for him to start molding things in his favor he's got a great sponsorship at the moment i think it's puma is he had recently so he's like uh he's got on all the attractions he's got all the people watching him and uh so his celebrity status is rising all the time can that john jones potential matchup that sort of one for the ages is that is that a, a motivation or a distraction for him at the moment as he goes into this fight it, it could happen but personally john jones is a threat and a half <laughs> the guy, the guy, you know, he's like, uh, I know he, he sort of like goes off the, off the rails sometimes. That's the only downside to him. He's had good sponsors, just as Izzy's having now, uh, Adesander. 
And um, but you know, as long as he stays grounded, he'd be okay. But um, I think John Jones, uh, for him to come back, because he's had a few flaws on you know testing and you know a few hiccups. But I think he's got a chance to do well at heavyweight first, and then if he could come back down and fluctuate to light heavy and back up to heavyweight. He could do possibly what Anna Sanders trying to do. Yeah, let's get you to the prediction then, Mark. How do you see the fight playing out and how do you see it being resolved with, with who victorious? I think, I think this is a dangerous fight, okay? Um, but he's fought heavyweight, he's fought light heavyweight, he's trained with. Uh, I know myself, I trained with somebody, uh, like I said, I used to be Glover, Chuck Liddell. I trained with heavier guys. And um, you'll find a lot of the guys, even if guys at my gym, the middleweights, they train with heavier guys and uh, the welterweights, so forth. So for him, he's used to training, fighting and sparring, or so I say, with heavier guys. So I think the way it's going to go is going to be no different from any other fight. The only downside to this is this guy, he's had it before. He's got a one-punch knockout power. So I think he's just going to pick, you know, pick at his leg, pick at his ribs, uh, jab to his face. I think his kicking is going to be the edge and the long, long shots, long reaching overhands, you know, jabs, you know, keeping at the end. And uh, once you see a little bit of floor or contact where he rocks him, he might go forward a little bit. But he's got to be careful even when he rocks him because he just he can come back. You know, I, I've seen um, I've seen a couple of fights when Jan come in and he caught him. So he's like, uh, you know, he's not someone to take lightly. Everybody's got to remember that uh, Israel Alexander, although he's going up away, he's got the height and reach advantage. And I think that's, that's going to be the edge of the fight. But I think it's going to be definitely Adesanda picking him out, not getting too involved, and probably winning by, I'd, I'd have to say, uh, third round, I think he might get the edge. Yeah, great point. I look forward to the fight as well, Mark. Look forward to speaking to you again. We're going to do an Amanda Nunes uh, preview as well for her fight with Megan Anderson. For more MMA content, head to skysports.com. Goodbye for now.